flawless victory. Hey guys, I'm Mono. I wanted to wait until Battlefield 2042 was officially out before making a proper video on it, just in case the day one patch provided some magical fix for the game's many, many problems. But that day has come and gone, and if anything, launch day was when I encountered Battlefield's most annoying bugs most frequently. So I'm here to give you guys my honest opinion on this game. I will do my best to be as sincere, honest, and thorough as possible, so let's start by getting a big question out of the way. Would I recommend you buy Battlefield 2042? No. There's multiple reasons for this. One of them is the game-breaking bugs, like not being able to redeploy or get revived after you die, with the only solution being to restart the game entirely. Another reason is that immediately after restarting the game to fix that bug, you will encounter another one, because attempting to join the party that you were just playing with isn't really possible. Sometimes it works, but most times you just start to load the map and then just get thrown back into the main menu without even an error message to explain what happened. And some people might think, oh, but those bugs will get patched and then it will be fine. Well, maybe, because I wouldn't trust the people that made this game to make me a bowl of cereal, because they would probably use orange juice instead of milk. The entirety of this game is completely devoid of any measure of attention to detail, of care, or passion. Everything is exceedingly flawed. Not a single aspect is without problems, because everything from the UI to the core gameplay decisions seems to have been manufactured based of like a PowerPoint presentation of what a game should be like instead of, you know, actual first-hand knowledge. The very obvious bugs are just the surface of the giant shitstorm that Battlefield 2042 is. For a game that's been in development for three years with multiple studios working on it, the end result can only be described as a massive disappointment. Another example of a rushed game that needed another year in development. The UI, for example, is just complete trash. It floods your screen with unimportant markers for flags that are literally on the other side of the map, obscuring your sight from what you actually need to see. So this makes something as simple as seeing the enemy a thousand times more difficult than it needs to be because sometimes the enemy is standing right in front of that A flag that you're looking at that's 900 meters away and you're gonna see the A flag like square before you actually see the enemy. The weapons are unbalanced because some of them can actually kill people like the SVK or the PB-29 while most of them feel like you're shooting out of a water sprinkler. Assault rifles are worse at distance than SMGs. Attachments don't provide the buffs that they should and will in fact have the exact opposite effect of what's described by them. Map design, especially in Breakthrough, is completely broken, like the B1 point in orbital that's impossible to attack because the defending team can spawn tanks and anti-air vehicles on top of the rooftop. Some rooftop capture points will spawn you in the base of the building, while others spawn you at the rooftop itself with no real logic behind the decision. The entire party and squad system feels like it was crafted by someone living in a cave since 1997 to avoid the Y2K bug, only to suddenly come out of hiding to be hired by DICE as the lead UI designer. His entire knowledge of the internet being based only on the movie Johnny Mnemonic. Not even Nintendo could create a party and friend system that is worse than this one. Matches take too long to get into because there's so many cutscenes it feels like you're playing Metal Gear Solid 4. And after you're done with a match, you are kicked out of the server only to matchmake again with the very real possibility of matching into another server playing the exact same map that you just finished because the server won't know that you actually played that map already. No way to switch or choose sides at all, no way to choose which squad you want to be in, which also means no easy way of playing with your friends if they are already in a match or if there's more than four of you. That's not to say there aren't some redeemable parts of Battlefield 2042. I made a video after the beta basically saying that I was having fun with it, and I think that still holds true with the actual game. Battlefield 2042 is a fun game, not because of the particulars of the actual new game, but rather because despite of all its problems, the Battlefield formula is still an excellent recipe for fun. The base game itself, the all-out warfare mode of Battlefield 2042 can have some incredible moments because it still shares the basic ingredients that make Battlefield what it is. The combination of land vehicles, air vehicles, and infantry in big open maps that can provide these incredible action moments, these multi-kills and vehicle explosions that never get old. Being able to rocket a helicopter out of the sky, 
or C4 a jeep to blow up an unsuspecting enemy tank was fun in Battlefield 2 and it will always be fun. I enjoy the moment to moment in the game the same way that I enjoyed Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4. The new loadout system where you can pick and choose whatever weapons and equipment you want provides this zero compromise experience to tailor your own custom class to whatever it is that you actually want and that is really cool. Your gameplay style is completely unbound by the limitations of the old class system and yes this has its pros and cons but it is a fun system to engage with. Most of the specialist abilities like the grapple hook, Sundance's wingsuit and her grenades or the deployable turret you know, just to name a few, those are great additions to the game that I think just further enhance that rock, paper, scissors design approach that at the core of what makes the Battlefield series so great. The rendition of Battlefield 9042 and Battlefield 3 in Portal is very well done. It's not perfect. I'm gonna say it's not perfect because the UI is still a problem and there are some problems like, for example, nobody's talking about the fact that the artillery tanks or vehicles in 9042 that were part of the original game are not in this new recreation, this new remake. But despite that, they are fun to play it and the Portal mode itself is decent enough to create some cool modes but just like everything else about Battlefield 2042, it lacks the ambition and the competence behind it to truly be something to get excited about. Portal doesn't allow you to customize things like the amount of vehicles per map or how or when they spawn. You can't change the tank that spawns in the middle of El Alamein to something else or remove it entirely. In fact, you can't even make a custom conquest mode and access the rule editor at the same time because the rule editor is only available for free-for-all or team deathmatch modes. This should all sound pathetically underwhelming because that is exactly what it is. It's hard to imagine someone working on the portal mode not realizing how lacking it is and how a little few additions and changes could make it something truly unique and spectacular. And that's something that can actually be said about the entire game. If only a few aspects of Battlefield 2042 had been seriously well thought out and worked on, it would elevate this to a 8 out of 10 game without a doubt. Unfortunately, there is no optimism left in me to think that Battlefield 2042's potential will ever be fully realized. For one, the game's player base seems to hate the game already, both in terms of the actual quote-unquote final product itself and in terms of the design choices made. It currently holds one of the worst scores ever for a game on Steam, and it's no surprise. The other main issue being just the sheer amount of idiotic choices made over every single possible detail. There is literally nothing in Battlefield 2042 that's better in Battlefield than in any other game. Well, maybe apart from like the vehicle handling of some vehicles. I've already given some examples of this, but I have plenty more, like the settings menu having this confusing slider that makes it hard to tell if something is on or off, or the audio mix being completely broken with footsteps from enemies that are 50 meters away sounding louder than massive explosions that are going off right next to you. In fact, the sound of things exploding is often so muted that there isn't any sound at all sometimes. Destructibility was reduced from previous titles and what's implemented has problems like short tree stumps stopping hovercrafts completely, which doesn't make any sense. There really is a lot to decompress here, but the sad truth is that Battlefield 2042 is still another Battlefield game that doesn't live up to the franchise's legacy. I'm not gonna dive into the theory that this was meant to be a battle royale or escape from Tarkov style game and then they changed course or something, because even though that might be true, at the end of the day, it just doesn't matter. I don't think the end product would have been very different if they had committed from the start to do a classic Battlefield game. Because what's most disconcerting about Battlefield 2042 isn't the amount of problems it has and how easily they would be fixed. Like, for example, just having a HUD opacity slider so the HUD isn't blocking your view most of the time. It's not that, it's just the fact that those problems are there to begin with. If you go to a restaurant and order a hamburger and you get a chicken breast in a hot dog bun, then sending that back and asking them to fix it, you know, <laughs> they're not going to be able to fix that because they don't know what needs to be done in the first place. Whether it's sheer incompetence, lack of care, lack of time, bad engine tools, or just bad game direction, it doesn't change the fact that expecting the people that made all of these patently stupid choices 
to suddenly be able to detect and fix the problems that they themselves created, that's like taking wishful thinking to a whole new different level. At the end of the day, 2042 is a fun game in the same way any co-op shooter can be fun if you play it with friends. The vehicles are cool, the gadgets are fun to use, and the game looks pretty while everything is blowing up. The weather effects look cool, but even the massive tornadoes have very minimal to no impact at all on your actual gameplay. Hazard Zone is an alright mode to try out once in a while, but I couldn't even matchmake into it on launch day, so I think it's safe to say it's dead on arrival. Portal is a great way to revisit old classics for the nostalgia trip, but it will hardly provide lasting entertainment unless they massively overhaul its capabilities. This is the first time I'm gonna score a game on one of these videos because that's something that I didn't feel needed to be done in previous reviews, but I think this one merits it just to be super clear on what I think about it. This is a 5 out of 10 game. It provides fun mostly because playing games is fun in and of itself and they threw in enough ingredients in here to satisfy that basic need. Apart from that, almost everything is either poorly constructed, poorly thought out, poorly executed, and in many cases, all of those three. Buy this on sale in a few months, because if you play it right now, it won't replace other multiplayer shooters that you might be playing, unless those happen to be really, really bad to begin with. But the truth is, the game needs a lot of work, and I have basically no faith that the developers are going to be able to put in not only the work, but the quality of the work that needs to be put in. I don't know how much of Battlefield 2042 I will continue to play. I guess it will depend on the size, frequency, and quality of whatever updates it does receive, but I have little to no expectations of those updates in the first place. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. I do think Battlefield 2042 could be an absolutely spectacular game if basically all of the problems are removed, weapon balance is corrected, gunplay is improved, and the UI is completely and utterly redone from scratch. Maybe that's where we are a year from now, but I wouldn't keep my hopes up. All right, as always, thank you for watching. Please leave down any comments, any thoughts you have on the game down in the comments section. I would love to hear those. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope I will catch you in the next one.